that's coming in. It's not seen the Memorial Church in love. All these young people.
I wish we had, you know, proclamation happens in all kinds of ways. I wish we had just made that the sermon today because it was pretty much, if you followed it, it was pretty much the sermon for today. So anyway, Vivian, thank you for that and our musicians as well, other musicians as well. Welcome. This is Montreat Presbyterian Church. This is the second Sunday of the Easter season, and uh, it's a delight to have you uh, worshiping with us today, those of you here in the room, and uh, those of you joining us online from at home or away. And also, I'm told we've got a significant group over here from Hudson Memorial Presbyterian in Raleigh. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to Hudson Memorial. Check them out. The average age of our congregation has plummeted. Thank you for, um, for bringing that to us today. It's great to have you here, and what a wonderful thing for you to join us in worship. That's, that it means a ton, seriously. Thank you for being here today. Uh, today we receive the Daily Change offering. That's a, a Hunger Ministries offering of, received by our presbytery and distributed to places around the world, but also right here in our own community. Uh, there are recipients of that. That'll happen during the opening hymn today. You'll be uh, uh, invited to come forward as you wish. Once the singing of the hymn begins, there will be people on either side of the communion table holding soup cans and if you want to make a contribution for the daily change offering the idea is that this is money that we set aside every time we uh, have the privilege of a, of a nourishing uh, meal uh, and uh, uh, if we set aside just a, a little bit of our daily change from that um, uh, and combine that all together in this congregation multiply that by the 149 churches in our presbytery and you can really do something with that money uh, to help some people who really really need it so daily change, if you'd like to make a check, you can just write it to MPC, that's Montreat Presbyterian Church, on the memo line, write daily change or something like that, um, and bring it forward as you wish. Uh, today, I'm uh, grateful we will be um, celebrating Holy Communion today, and uh, Sally Woodard is going to be our co-efficient today. Sally, we're grateful for your ministry in this church and everywhere that you go. Uh, also, uh, it'll be done by intention, so uh, at the right time, everyone will be invited to come forward, and there will be uh, uh, people with a chalice and a bread basket on either side of the communion table. There will also be two who are roving, so if coming forward to the table table doesn't work well for you, but you want to receive communion, they make sure they see you and they will come and they'll bring it to you. Um, this Wednesday, Montreat Wednesday, everybody's invited 4 o'clock p.m. down in the walk-up building. Ann Chesky from the Presby Presbyterian Heritage Center is going to come and speak to us and give us a great program. And for a lot of us, we haven't had a chance maybe to meet Ann yet. That'll be worthwhile. So please do come to that. It's going to be a great program. Are there any other announcements that need to be made? Seeing none on this second Sunday of the Easter season, I thank you for being with us in body and in spirit, and uh, let us worship God together. I invite you to stand if you're able and also join me in the responsive call to worship. How very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. 
It is like the precious oil on the head running down upon the beard of Aaron, running down over the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord ordained his blessing, life forevermore. Please be seated. Friends, trusting in the promise of grace, let us pour out our hearts before God. Will you join me in our prayer of confession? You have sown yourself to us, O God, by word and spirit, with signs and wonders in flesh and blood, yet we still struggle to live and believe the good news of Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us. Forgive us, we pray. Enter into our lives and cast out our fear so that we may come to trust in you and have life in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, 
This is the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Will you pray with me? Oh God, open our eyes and our ears and our minds and our hearts that we may receive with joy what you say to us today. The first reading is from the Gospel according to John chapter 20, beginning at verse 19. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the religious authorities. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands, his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hand and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my, side in, my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your fingers here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not, do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hey. 
The second scripture reading comes from not the gospel according to John, but the first letter of John, 1 John chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. Listen now for God's word. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testify to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with God's Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light, and in God there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. How very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. On the theme of darkness and light, Adam Bornman wrote recently that resilience isn't just something we conjure up out of nowhere, but more fundamentally is something that moves toward us and is freely available. The stubborn, insistent, tenacious resilience of God's kingdom come in the person of Jesus. It's the resilience of light that keeps overcoming darkness, of joy in the morning following a night of weeping. It's the resilience of a kingdom rushing toward the whole world in love. It is never down for the count, never hopelessly stuck, never without resurrection, always resilient. The rapper DMX was in questionable solitary confinement at the hands of a longtime adversary. When he wrote, so if it takes for me to suffer, for my brother to see the light, give me pain till I die, but please, Lord, treat him right. Martin Luther King was making the case against trying to overcome violence with violence when he said, darkness can't put out darkness. Only light can do that. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, said the disciples, that God is light, and in God there is no darkness at all. The disciples had locked the doors from the inside of the house that had served as their meeting place, and now it had become their last paper-thin refuge where they huddled together in fear. You may have noticed that I replaced a, a word with a couple of words in the Uh, gospel reading this morning was for fear of the Jews is what it says in John's gospel. Um, There's a lot in that term these days Um, and and I oversimplified by saying in afraid of the religious authorities. It's also fear of the religious mob. It was a fear of the anti-Christian element that was inclined to violence or certainly appeared to be based on what they had just done to the leader of this of this band of faithful Jews which was the disciples. A chain on the door, a double bolt, a giant key, a big piece of furniture maybe nearby to slide into the way of the opening as a last resort. With boards over the windows, you can imagine the low light in the house matched the mood inside of the house. If you've ever been to the place of darkness that some among us have known, You know, it's 
not really a place. It's everywhere and it's nowhere. Everything you look at and think about just seems kind of hopeless and strangely soulless. And you wonder if there can ever be joy or light again. Somewhere inside, in the mind or in the heart or at your core, you know that the light is there. And that you are connected to it, despite the fact that you still can't see it or feel it or taste it at that moment. But you know it's there. And you know you just have to keep trusting that piece of knowledge until the feeling reasserts itself, until you find that feeling again, which you will. Those who have been to that darkness know that it is no badge of honor to have been there. And they'll tell you that sometimes you just feel like all you want to do is lock yourself in the house and huddle in fear. A chain on the door, a double bolt, a piece of furniture to block the entrance, boards over the windows. That is exactly the place into which Jesus comes. And says to those who can barely remember that it ever even had felt possible. Peace be upon you. He came effortlessly into the room, past the bolted door, and showed them his hands and his side. And for the first time in days, days when they huddled and hid in dread, for the first time in days, they rejoiced. The people who walked in darkness once again felt not just relief, but actual joy, not just happiness, but a condition of the heart where enough light breaks into the gloom that you can actually feel hopeful and alive again. They shared this amazing experience and observed the reality that a light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it despite what it had looked like just an hour earlier. And all the disciples in what had become a house of fear we're now relieved and restored and re-inspired together. How good it is when kindred live together in unity. And they probably remembered that psalm, and it was probably in their minds. But Thomas wasn't there. There's a message in the Easter season the Easter season is seven weeks that, liturgically speaking, are all meant to be exactly as celebratory as the first day of the season, commonly called Easter Sunday. And the message of the season is, he is risen, he is risen indeed. But Thomas bears another message on the second day, second Sunday of Easter, one that resonates with anyone who enjoys the season and celebrates the message and loves the music and recognizes faint traces of something special in the air but can't avoid a certain feeling that feels somewhere between what they call FOMO and chimo. You know what I'm talking about? FOMO, F-O-M-O, -O, stands for fear of missing out. It's a driving force in marketing these days. Capturing people's fear of missing out is the hook that brings them in. Because they don't want FOMO to turn into the regretfulness of chimo, K-I-M-O, which stands for knowing I missed out. The young people over here are going, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> I'm acting like I'm really hip and everything. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our new associate pastor. <laughs> Just by showing up, Thomas, as he does every year in the lectionary on the second Sunday of Easter today, embodies a message. Thomas embodies a message for those who maybe can see that there's something amazing going on here, but the bright light of Easter and the joyful sounds of the celebration feel just a little bit dimmer, just a little bit softer and more held back from their vantage point. They may be dealing with situations or realities or anxieties that simply don't allow them to jump up and down with the Easter bunny 
even as they fully appreciate and with every atom in their body and every ounce of dedication still commit their lives to the joy and the triumph of the message of God's uncontainable love. But to know what they're going through is to read the room and see that sometimes it's just not the right time for a party. Or it may not be any external thing they're going through at all. Thomas is also for all of us for whom the moon sometimes blocks out the sun even on what otherwise would have been a clear day. And unlike those in earlier times who panicked at an eclipse because what if the sun never comes back? Thomas knows it's not the end and it's not an omen of God's wrath and it is definitely not a triumph of darkness over light. It's a momentary spectacle that reminds us all of the majesty of the one who created us and the beauty of the light and the dark and the trust God has earned by showing us over and over and over and over again in the world, in its history, and in our lifetimes that a light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not overcome it. Thomas is for all of us when he says, look, I understand that when Jesus came and in a sublime moment of unveiling cosmic light to pierce the existential darkness, breathed peace on all my friends who were holed up in dread. I was out getting groceries. I was tending to business. I was dealing with everyday life in the everyday world, which is what human beings have to do. And when I got home, everybody said, we've seen the Lord. And obviously I should have been over the moon about this. But all I can do is tell the truth. And the fact is, and there's no arrogance or pride in it, if I don't see it with my own eyes, if I don't feel it for myself, what do you want me to tell you? Thomas is our guarantor that the gospel really is good news. That Easter and the resurrection really are good news. That the communion of the body and blood of our Savior is definitively good news. Thomas is for all of us on the days when you're not sure you've seen what you feel like you are supposed to have seen. On the days when you imagine you must be the only one who's not feeling what it seems like you're supposed to be feeling, whatever that means. On the days when you need to know that you can and do still walk in the light. Because in real human life, the life Jesus lived and died and lives again to redeem, the sky may from time to time darken in the middle of the day. But the darkness is never entirely or finally dark. And the light peeks through even when the sunlight is obstructed. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. Jesus said to Thomas, reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. And Thomas said, my Lord and my God, And Jesus said, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Will you pray with me? Loving God, every day you are our God and every day you are love. Our bad days, our good days, our great days, our celebratory days, the days when we are holding on to a secret that would we feel, bring down the room if we shared it. The days when we worry, even when everything seems to be going wonderfully well, when is the other shoe going to drop? Even on the days, O God, 
when we aren't quite sure we can see you or feel you or hear you at the moment, in truth, we know that you are still our God and you are still love. Thank you, God. Thank you for your astonishing love that keeps us going every day and at all times and in every circumstance. And thank you for making that love stronger than we are so that it doesn't depend on us for it to be real and true and the most powerful force in the universe. Hear us now, O God, as we lift up our prayers of gratitude and thanksgiving, recognizing the countless blessings that lie before us and all around us. And hear us as we lift up our prayers of thankful praise for the people who have meant the most to us and do mean the most to us, the places that hold a special place in our hearts, all the ideas and thoughts and possibilities in front of us. O oh God, hear us as in silence we lift up to you our prayers of gratitude for that for which we are most thankful. Recognizing, O oh God, that you shower blessings upon us not only because you are so good, kind, and merciful to us, but to equip and strengthen us for service in your world. Even if that service uh, is limited to our own ability to sit where we are and pray fervently. O oh God, we do that now and seek your inspiration and guidance so that we will know what to do to serve you in this world and to reach out hands and arms and voices of your love into the world. So hear us now at this moment, O oh God, as we pray for the broken places, for the victims of war and violence, be it geopolitical or behind closed doors here in our own neighborhood. O oh God, hear our prayers for those who are suffering, who are hungry, who are alone. Hear our prayers for those who are sick, and dying, for those who are hospitalized, for those who are recovering, and for all those who tend to those who are in need, who offer their care and expertise and love and strength and support. Hear us as we pray, O oh God, lifting up to you the prayers for the world and the prayers for our community that we've brought with us today. O oh God, as we prepare to gather around your communion table, we remember that we share this feast not only with one another here in the room, with one another who are joining us in this worship service who are not present in the room, with all your people throughout the world, but also with your church of all time. For those who have gone before us and who patiently await a reunion for all those who will come after us, for whom the world is impatiently waiting for their gifts to arrive. O oh God, we give you thanks and praise that you make us part of the communion of saints and you feed us on your body and your blood and your eternal word. Hear us now as we pray together the prayer that our Savior taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever, amen. Beloved, let us return to God the offerings of our life and the gifts of the earth.
Blessed are you, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. In the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Friends, our tradition recognizes that access to the table is not a right conferred upon the worthy, but a privilege given to the undeserving who come in faith, repentance, and love. Even one who doubts or whose trust is wavering may come to the table in order to be assured of God's love and grace in Christ Jesus. Friends, this is the Lord's table. Our Savior invites all who trust him to share the feast which he has prepared Let us pray. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right, O God, for us to come before you this day to give you our thanks and praise. As we have gone through a time of sorrow at the cross and the time of joy, at the resurrection, we come to you today to remember that our Lord has been with us through all these times. We come to remember that he has offered himself to us and to all who will believe. We give you thanks this day that you are so near to us even when we don't know it or feel it. We give you thanks that we can come here and worship you and receive again this bread and this cup, which symbolize what our Savior has done for us. And so as we come this day, fill our hearts with your love so that we may, as we partake of these gifts, be moved to go out and give gifts to others. In the name of our Savior, we pray. Amen. 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 
on the night of his rest, our Lord took bread and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, this is the cup of the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. Beloved, every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the saving death of our Lord until he comes again. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
having been nourished on the body and blood of our Savior Jesus Christ and on the very word of God and by the covenant community, by the communion of saints that is gathered in this room and gathered around the world and gathered through all time right now. Oh, oh my friends, having, having, having been fed together, let us now lift up our prayer after communion, saying together, we thank you, O oh God, that through word and sacrament, you have given us your Son, who is the true bread from heaven and food of eternal life. So strengthen us in your service that our daily living may show our thanks. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Before we go into the world, we charge one another with the words of Holy Scripture. Which commandment is the first of all? You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. And the second is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Go in peace.